Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Jimmy Curve. My name is Jimmy Putnam. I'm your host. With me, as always, are my co-hosts, Joshua Vossler. Hello, everybody. And Will Doherty. Hello, everybody. And, <laughs> Hello, everybody. And, and me, your host, Jimmy Putnam. Hello, everybody. Is that what we're doing now? I want to have a catchphrase. <laughs> No can do. Josh, I noticed that you uh, are opening up your stand-up routine now with, hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I was hello. Very, very happy to see that. Uh, that pleased me greatly. Uh, the music that you just heard was a ferocious jungle cat. Stay tuned for the end of the show. I'll play another track of theirs. Like them on Facebook and go see them live. They are a cool local band. Uh, got a lot to do today. We got a good show. We're gonna do. We're gonna try a new experimental trivia game. I don't know, I don't really have a format or a plan. I just like trivia games, and so I'm going to bring on my wife, the beautiful, lovely, talented, smart, not you, Will, it's Mary Putnam. And, uh, <laughs> I was going to clap, you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> you raised your hands, and I thought, well, beautiful, talented, smart, all of those apply to you, right? just not this time. But uh, we're not married because Nebraska's that far behind the times. <laughs> so we're going to bring on Mary in a little bit. She's going to ask us some trivia questions uh, just to see if it works. Kind of an experiment. Uh, we're going to talk to some new. We're going to talk to some news. <laughs> we're going to do some news stories and talk about them. Then we are going to talk to David Kausgard on the phone uh, about a show he's got coming up. So we're going to do a little phoner with him in a little bit. But right now, let's get to our guest this week. The very beautiful, smart, <laughs> talented, gorgeous, decent in bed, uh, vacant staring, James Lindsay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Hey, everybody. <laughs> nice try, buddy. Yeah. Uh, James Lindsay, besides stealing catchphrases, what else do we need to know about you? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Uh... Let me answer it. You are a local comedian. Correct. <laughs> I believe that's it. Yeah. I believe that's what we need to know about James Lindsay. That's it. Will, you got anything? Uh, James Lindsay uh, is completing the uh, Ghosts of Uproot uh, tour <laughs> right. for uh, guests on the podcast. That's here. right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Because we've had Ryan Dowd. We have. Corey Brewer. Joshua Vossler sometimes shows up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every episode. Well, Every... one time, one time we had to call you. I showed up though. You <laughs> showed up. You brought it. I so brought it. so far, if we're keeping track here, I believe that means Jimmy has missed one episode. We deleted that one. That's and correct. And Joshua has missed one episode, which means the only person to appear on every episode of the Jimmy Curve wow. thus far. Will Doherty. Hey. <laughs> you were the only one with perfect attendance. <laughs> that is so ironic. You win nothing. Uh, but uh, James Lindsay, you were in a local group of stand-up comedians known as Uproot Comedy. Mm -hmm. You threw local shows, hosted them, booked them, talked to local venues. Uh, and then suddenly, as, as suddenly as it appeared, Uproot was gone in the wind. Like Batman or Darkman or Spider Man or <laughs> Pedophilia Man. No, no. No. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that was. It's not as creepy if you're just looking at breasts. I I'm not going to finish that drop. <laughs> it, was, it felt really inappropriate. Talk to me about uh, Uproot Comedy, James. Well, all those things you said, uh, talking to venues, uh, booking comedians, uh, I did none of those things. I was just uh, <laughs> I was just kind of along for the ride. Pure talent. This yes. one. Here, the, the thing about it, this is what I wanted to talk about, really, is uh, we, it's such a young comedy scene. I've said this on this show a thousand times, but there just hasn't been comedy in Lincoln for very long. And one of the things that uh, happened as the scene was forming, I, I mean, it's still forming, but as it was initially forming is people started forming groups, like stand-up groups. There was Collabo Comedy in mm -hmm. Omaha. OK Party, yeah. Uproot Comedy here. Triple uh, A. Triple A Comedy was another one. I, I've never been in one of those groups. I guess my question is why? To be honest, uh, I was kind of anti-group to begin with. Like, the scene was already kind of clicky enough. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when I started OK Party wasn't really a thing yet. Collabo, they were doing their thing. And I thought, you know, it just makes it somewhat clickier. 
I, I took a break from comedy for a while, and uh, in 2000, 2012, 2013, when I came back. How, how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, I started uh, in April of 2010. Okay. So, like, almost five years, but I took two long breaks. Right. Uh, like, right in between there. Like, one was to, to get deployed, uh, and I was gone for a year. And then I came back, and I was doing it for about a year, and then I just, I don't know, for some reason I just stopped. I stopped going to the open mics. I stopped going to shows and stuff, and I just mm. stayed away for a bit. And uh, when I came back, it was actually pretty surprising. Like all, like this whole new crop of comedians had showed up in the time that I was gone, uh, including uh, well, I had seen Josh and Corey like right before I stopped. But uh, I came back and uh, I hit it off with Josh really well right away, and Corey, and they uh, they asked me to to be in their group, and I think the I was on the fence about it, but then Josh said, uh, we dig what you do. <laughs> he, like, but, he, but, he, he buttered you up. Yeah. Yeah. He buttered right. me up. Yeah. So I was like, all right. See that, to hear you describe that, I had kind of a, an oddly similar experience and I didn't go to, uh, I didn't go to, uh, Afghanistan, obviously. I did go to Chicago and there are some similarities, uh, but I, I had the same thing happened where I, I was from Nebraska and I did comedy here. I moved. And the first time I moved, I went to Austin for a little while. And when I came back, I felt like all of the guys who eventually would go on to do, uh, who would be in collabo comedy, had just appeared by yeah. the time I got back. And then the second time I moved to Chicago, and then the second time I came back, Uproot had appeared out of nowhere. So mm. it was kind of a weird and, thing. And uh, all of uh, this predates me, so I was not <laughs> there, I was not there for the inception of any of this. Uproot humor... Basically, we liked what Collabo Comedy was doing. It was collaboration comedy at the time. And uh, we liked that. We liked the shows that they put on and the stuff that they were doing when they come down to Duffy's Open Mic. And we liked those guys. And we just were like, me and Corey were like, uh, we can copy them in Lincoln. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. like, that's basically what we did. Plus, there's benefits of having uh, being in a group. And having some sort of label or name yeah. ultimately gives you some sort of instant credibility with, like, bars and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You have – you give them – there's something there. Plus, there's four of us in a group that we could put on an o our own show if we wanted to. We didn't have to worry about finding different comics or anything. Like, if we built some sort of brand or label that, you know, eventually, like, people will just want to see us for do stuff. Was it Was it frustrating? Did you ever have the thought – uh, okay, we're doing this show, and I have to put these four people on it, and that takes up two thirds of the show, and I'm annoyed by that. Um, I should ask James that. Yeah, ask James that. <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't think we ever ran into that. Anytime I asked people to be on the show, they would say no. Like I, that was just my. <laughs> I don't know if it was me or really asking the wrong people. I can't imagine any of us local comedians like turning down shows. Yeah, that happened a lot. Like, I don't think I. I don't think I've ever said no to be on anything unless I literally like had another show at that exact same time. But if there's five minutes difference, I'll try and do both. Because like it just doesn't happen that often. There's just not that many shows to do. So yeah. you must be an unlikable person. I. <laughs> that must be it. There it is. <laughs> Boom. Did you ever have that uh, experience, Josh, where you mm. were like, "Well, I got to put these." Like, I want to do a show. No, because we got a venue. We liked doing like the the sets would be shorter the more comics we had on there. Right. So you know, so if we do, you know, we, you do about eight or nine comics, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's you know around ten minutes sets. That's a good show. We like doing those shows where you have more comics on, but they only do 10 minutes. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I like that kind of format, too, because it's just like, you know, you don't ever have to worry about, like, a crowd getting tired of, of, of a stand-up, you know? Because mm -hmm. it's only 10 minutes on to the next somebody different, on I, to the next somebody different. I keep trying to tell people this. No one in any crowd has ever said, man, I wish that local stand-up did another five minutes. <laughs> no one wants local stand-ups to go long, yeah. ever. No local stand-up should ever do a half an hour, especially at a bar where people have paid like two or three dollars or five bucks to get in. They don't want you to do a half an hour. Am I alone in thinking that? That's my perception. Well, I think it's such a small like community that it, people that like comedy probably have already seen you do some of that comedy somewhere. 
because it's such a small, you know what I mean? It's not. And the people who haven't just don't know you. And they don't, <laughs> they don't, like, they want to see, they'll, they'll watch Pat and Oswald do a half an hour or an hour. You know, they'll watch, they'll go to the, to, you know, a big theater and see Jerry Seinfeld, you know, go as long as they want. You know, they paid a lot of money for that. But, like, local comedians, I get annoyed when local comedians go a long time. I, I think local comedians should do 10 minutes and get the hell out of the way. That's just, that's my perception. I, it might just be me having sat through a shitload of open mics, though. I don't know. Like, there could there could be a bunch of people in that crowd who don't see a ton of comedy, and they want you to go a, a long time, you know? I mean, certainly, if everything you say is clicking, like, if every joke is just hitting a nerve, you got to keep going. But that's not really what I'm talking about, you know? I'm talking about guys who go up on shows and start working things out. <laughs> you know, is that just me? No? My... I agree, but I think... Am I rubbing people the wrong way here? I think that's a local problem. Like, if you go to, like, another scene like L.A. or New York or Chicago, you can't you can't go long. You know, like, they'll, they'll give you the light, and if you go past it, they'll... There are so many shows where nobody lights anybody. I, w- I was just talking about Will's show, Will Doherty yeah. Loves Company. We were on that, and uh, this was... How long ago was this? Like, two months ago, I think. Two months ago, and there was... You know, no, this is the one that was... Just recent, it was whatever the Husker Bowl game was because it got moved to that Sunday. Oh, okay. So it was the last month's. Yeah, what? yeah. Because it was okay. on. Because because there were two shows that night. Your show was supposed to go from like seven to nine. Right. And then there was another show in the same venue from nine to eleven. And the person who got up on stage, the second to last person, got up on stage at nine twenty-five and did twenty minutes, so that the last person had seven minutes or something. And it's. It's kind of a riff show, so it's easy to get lost in there. But right. without someone tracking it, like I just I was sitting in the crowd watching it because I was on the next show, and I was just thinking, this is nobody going to pull this guy off the stage. It wasn't bad either. It wasn't a bad show. The show was fine. It was just that's like I think most local shows don't regulate themselves based on you know if they're on stage and they're enjoying it, they keep going. Without thinking about the audience or the venue or the show, I'm not just making fun of Will. Right. Well, and well, and and what you're describing is kind of two different things because one of them is open mics, and when you're at an open mic, you're absolutely right. Like, do your do your time, do your five minutes, you know, like get off the stage. Other people are waiting to mm-hmm. do their time, and the audience that's there isn't there on purpose a lot of the time. Like, you don't, you know, an open mic is a weird scenario no matter what. Right. It's a little different. I think if you're, it, if you, like, book a show and you bill a show that, like, hey, we're having this show, it's going to be set up this way so that comedians can do a longer set, like, that's a different scenario than, like, an open mic when it's like, yeah, absolutely, get off the stage. I do think there are times when it can be fine if you plan for it to have comedians do a longer set. But I do think you're right if, if, when you're in your statement of like, you know, a local audience has never said, I wish that comic had done more time. Sure. There's a, there's a there's a way of doing it where it makes sense. Like uh, the the Brad Stewart's underground comedy show is set up so that the last person right. does a half an hour. Like it's designed for that and it's yeah. leading into another show. That's, I don't have a problem with that. That's totally fine. Right. I, I, I'm more talking about uh, like, cause that show is billed as, you know, there's a, there's a host, there's a feature sure. and there's a headliner, a, a traditional you know. like comedy club style. Right. And, it's, but, and, and, and even though one person goes pretty long, the show is regulated. I mean, the whole show right. is one is going to be one hour. You're not going to push that one way or the other. I'm just kind of talking about shows where you say, like, there's just a lot of shows where you're like, okay, we're starting at 9. You show up at 9. The show gets started at 9.35. And then people start doing, and every comic goes up and does 15 or 16 minutes, you know, and then the yeah. last person just, the last person goes up there, looks at the clock, and goes, "Geez, it's only eleven thirty. I can do two and a half hours." <laughs> <You know? laughs> and like invariably, when they say that, someone in the crowd will be like, "Yay!" and clap. Like they don't want that. They just don't know how else to react because they don't want to be like, "No," because <laughs> that would be weird. Right? They clap, and then after a little while, they leave. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, speaking of leaving. Uh, uh, 
what is your group? What was your group? Uproot. Uproot. Uproot just just vanished in the night. Uh, what happened? We had like membership kind of became like a a gelatinous thing. Like members would leave and kind of come back. Am I like? We always had a couple guys in the group that would say that they're going to quit or they're quitting. Yeah. And then the next week they would do they, stuff. Yeah. And then yeah. it would be like, I don't want to do this anymore, you know, or they go on hiatus and, you know. What, which were, was... what were their names? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, no, actually, James, not no, until a, towards the end, you were like solid. that a little bit. But, like, <laughs> it, was, it was like Ryan, like, he would, you know, every once in a while be like, I don't want to do this anymore. Corey would... You know, have one okay show, times. and then he'd be like, "Fuck this!" You know, and like, I'm gonna walk <laughs> across Nebraska. Yeah, you know, <laughs> just weird shit like that. And so it it didn't help con the confidence in the group at all. But you know what's funny? That when I was playing music, I, I I was in a band for a long time before I ever did comedy. We had that with singers. Like it was so hard for us to keep a singer uh, in our band. We went through we and we were like a big. I was in a ska band and we had eight members and then those eight members never changed, but we went through five singers in two years and none of them were because we fired somebody. It was just like, you know, we'd, we'd find somebody and they'd be great and we'd start doing shows and we'd record a little bit and then the singer would decide to go to India for six months and then we'd find another singer and then he'd flake out and move out of town like it was just it was so hard so uh i guess you know dealing dealing with divas right yeah and it was never <laughs> i mean we all got along pretty good it's like we're all still friends now it wasn't anything to do with like you know the the band breaking up because you know somebody you know well all of those the, all of those comedy groups disbanded Right, and but you know what? Yeah. It was except it, for OK Party is still technically together, but but OK Party is even had people move away. Well, like the, they still have right. some members. It's a good experience, especially us. We weren't the most experienced comics, but we wanted more comedy in Lincoln. That was a good way to do it because we got we we did more comedy in Lincoln because, like I said, just having just time. having a brand gave us legitimacy in the eyes of where we were wanted to do comedy at, and it got us in the door, and we put on good shows. It was a good experience, and I learned a lot about comedy just by doing that, opposed to just like doing Duffy's every Monday. Right. Like yeah, I I realized like it's a lot harder than you think it would be to <laughs> keep a sh open mic going at a small you know bar down in the Haymarket like that <laughs> that that is a harder thing it's it's hard to get people to come to comedy you know what i mean it's not like mm -hmm. you know bar owners they're just like oh yeah if we have comedy people will just come right. no it doesn't doesn't fucking it doesn't work like that at all no it doesn't and i think it's much more fun to be in charge of your own project I, that's just my uh personal opinion and that's why i wanted you to ask about the new project you're starting which is known as comedy liftoff yeah like it on facebook watch the pilot uh, more to come. More to come. Hopefully. That's uh, Comedy Liftoff. Lift spelled L-Y-F-T, as in the... Uh, the ride-sharing. The, the ride-sharing. Is that what it's called? based transportation company. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Tell so, us about that. Uh, well, I had this idea to basically become a Lyft driver and just tell my jokes to my random passengers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, mm -hmm. a lot of my ideas, I probably wasn't going to do anything with it. But I had a, a project that I had to turn in for a class last semester. So I thought, I'll just, I mean, for this project, a lot of people in the class, they like wrote, you know, the first chapter of their novel, or they did like a series of poems or like video essays. And I couldn't do any of that stuff. So it's like, <laughs> oh, I've got this idea for this comedy thing. I'll just do that. And that'll be my final project. And so that's what gave me the the impetus to what what grade did you get on it <laughs> i got an a plus actually nice uh yeah i watched the pilot it's you giving people a ride and telling your jokes to them yep the most amusing part is watching their reaction in my opinion yeah uh now for for the pilot uh, you did not blindside anybody with this. No. But your plan going forward is to do so? Yeah. Like, 
the for the pilot, it was really more of like a proof of concept. And because I had a deadline on the project, uh, I couldn't sign up a car in time, right? You know, for for Lyft. So I just uh, I just had some friends pose as random Lyft passengers, right? <laughs> and just kind of faked it. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoyed watching your girlfriend pretend like she'd never heard your material. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Honestly, when when I was playing it, I was editing it, and I was like, "Man, she's she's laughing like pretty hard." And I'm like, "I know she's heard this stuff before, but maybe my delivery is just." She actually just told me like last week that all that laughter was fake, <laughs> and I was devastated. Yeah. I was wow. so hurt. I, no, I remember thinking that at the time. I was like, oh, "I know she's seen him do these." Oh jokes my god! Ten times. When you guys have a real fight and she tells you that other thing was fake, you're gonna really. <laughs> <laughs> do do you feel like on next if like your next episode that you're gonna have to do different jokes? What I'm gonna do with future episodes is uh, I'm gonna have guest comedians come on okay. and do the same thing. So that'd be cool. I I, I won't have to burn through so much material, mm-hmm. and also it'll give other people I hope exposure as well. Yeah. You know that'd be awesome. So and like I also driving the car or sitting in the back seat or. Uh, I still have to figure that out legally, but I think if they're driving the car and I'm just sitting in the back seat, I think, I think that's fine. That'd be cool. Yeah. I think that's a really good idea. Actually, I love that idea. And you know, if you're ever <laughs> looking for comedians to do that, I know, I know some, so. Oh yeah? Yeah. <laughs> well, I might, I might go through like 18 or 19 guests and then maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're implying, James. Oh, nothing, nothing, nothing at all. (laughs) (laughs) And then finally get around. Uh, When we first, when we first started talking about doing this podcast, uh, you had an idea that you were like, uh, you wanted to come on and do a reoccurring segment called James Lindsay shits on your point. Shits on your childhood. This was an idea. I oh, that's had. a different thing. That's not what you told me. But let's hear about that. <laughs> well, it was an idea I had for a podcast that I came up with. A, a buddy of mine from Omaha was on Allegory Radio. He was the one of the guys on that podcast. And uh, is that Chad East? Yeah, yeah. Chad East and Ted the Polish Hammer. I don't know his last name. Mm. Um, it's <laughs> Polish Hammer. Yeah, that's his last name. It's that's what he prefers to be called. <laughs> what is I'm, that, Polish? I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's technical. No. Ted, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, so we had this idea for a podcast where we'd bring on a guest and they would talk about something they loved from their childhood. And we would just shit all over it. And <laughs> I actually, I wanted to have Will and Ryan, Ryan Dowd, be on it because I thought like they'd both be really good. Uh, a, a virtual uh, black hole of joy. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ryan and Will are both a part of Sadness Voltron. You guys should start we, your own comedy which group. Which we created recently. <laughs> yeah. uh, check out Comedy Liftoff. Uh, check it out on Facebook or YouTube. It's got a YouTube page now. It's its own YouTube channel. Twitter handle? Yep. Uh, at Comedy Liftoff. There you go. Uh, check it out. Hey, let's see if we can get David Kalsgaard on the phone. Oh, it sounds like ringing. <laughs> hey, hello, hello. David Kalsgaard? Jimmy Putnam. Welcome to the doing? Jimmy Curve. You are on the air, good sir. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Fantastic. Uh, I am also here with Will Doherty, Josh Vossler, and our guest this week, James Lindsay. Say hello to everybody. Will, Josh, James, how you guys doing? And on three, everybody say hi to Dave. One, two, three. Hi. Fuck hi, you, Dave! Dave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, I couldn't pick out too many of the voices there, but I'm pretty sure I heard Will. Yeah, that's <laughs> heard Will. <laughs> yeah, yep. That's a lot of people's reaction to this show. Uh, <laughs> a lot of fucking babbling, but I heard Will, so uh, it's cool. Uh, Dave, you host a monthly comedy show in. Council Bluffs called the Backs Against the Wall Comedy Show, and there's one coming up soon? Uh, yeah, we've got one coming up uh, the uh, next Monday after this one comes out, so January 19th. January 19th, and that's what's the location? Uh, that's going to be at the Broadway Bar in Council Bluffs, 144 West Broadway, 
for anybody who wants to type it into the gypsus to get there. <laughs> uh, perhaps you want to hire a Lyft driver to get you there. Hey. And, uh, I'm all for that. And perhaps James Lindsay will tell you jokes on the way. Uh, anyways, that's a, it's a cool show. Backs Against the Wall is a cool show. It's a really like intimate room. Uh, and the audience when I was there was, uh, in a good mood and they were receptive and it was a super fun show. Uh, mm -hmm. so who's on this one? Who's on the, this next show? Uh, next one. I still haven't heard back from a couple of local guys. Uh, but the main guy that we're bringing in is we're bringing in, uh, uh, Zach Peterson from Chicago. Ah, yeah. The, a former yeah. local guy. Yeah, former local guy. And uh, very funny. Chicago. Oh, yeah. He's he's one of my favorite joke writers out there right now. So I love every time uh, when he comes back. It's just fun to watch him do yeah. his thing. Yeah. Zach Peterson actually is uh, sort of responsible for me getting started in comedy. Uh, I actually just ran into him at a show and started talking to him at a bar uh, and asking him how he got started. And he was like, well, go here and try this, go here and try this. And then I did. And you know, now I got my own podcast. So you're making it. Yeah. Just one step at uh, a time. I've already made it. David. <laughs> I don't want to, like, I, I don't you're, know. I don't know. Right, I'm sorry. That was, that was rude. I yeah. shouldn't, should never underestimate you. Yeah. I don't know where you, I don't know where you expect me to go from here. Yeah. David, uh, we got t-shirts now, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh shit! T-shirts. Oh yeah, Jimmy Curve T-shirts just came in today. So. I don't. I don't know if you were aware that yeah, uh, you're talking to the Jimmy Curve Studios live <laughs> right now. Oh uh, well, alrighty then. Uh, how much are T-shirts then? Oh, we're selling them for fifteen dollars. Ah, too rich for my blood. But good oh. luck to you. Yeah, good that's. <laughs> That could not have been more dismissive. <laughs> I suspect if I had said six dollars, he would have given the same response. <laughs> uh, we I mean, will, if you, yeah, if we you will, said anything, but send me. I'm sending you one free then. Right, right, right. Yeah. Uh, we don't even give our fucking in studio guests free T-shirts. That's bullshit. <laughs> uh, your show is in Council Bluffs, which people from Omaha hate. Now, I have a lot of, uh, we have, not a lot, but we have listeners from outside of the Nebraska area. What's wrong with Council Bluffs? I, I really don't know, man. Because that area, the, really... that, the area that the, that bar that your show is at, that, it's kind of a cool area. It's like an outdoor, yeah. like, neat sort of downtown-y strip. Yeah, it's got a, it's got sort of like that old, like, classic sort of feel to it. Like, not much has changed in that area since like the town's inception so it's it's got a nice historical feel to it so i don't know why people don't like going over there no i don't know i it's mean the, cool show the rest of council bluffs i kind of get i mean <laughs> <laughs> you, you drive past a person walking a pit bull wearing a wife beater and what would barely count as basketball shorts yeah you're, <laughs> you're gonna get a little concerned and that's, a, that's now in january <laughs> yeah, in January. Also, like, like, also to get into Council Bluffs, you have to drive past like sculptures from the Klingon Empire, which is <laughs> like there's just these giant gothic-looking steel, sharp-edged sculptures, which is it's yeah. very intimidating. Ed Edward Scissorbridge, I know what you're <laughs> talking about. <laughs> Edward Scissorbridge, uh, good stuff. Okay, well, uh, everybody, go see the Backs Against the Wall show. It is. Uh, give us the date, time, and place again. Uh, it's going to be January 19th at 8 p.m. at the Broadway Bar. What, what day of the week yeah. is that? Uh, that's Monday night. Okay, so Monday at the Broadway Bar. Go see Backs Against the Wall. Check out anybody locally who hasn't had a chance to catch Zach Peterson. You don't want to miss it. Uh, no, no, he's, he's definitely worth it. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on, Dave. Come join us in studio sometime. Hey, more than, more than happy to. Thank you guys for having me on tonight. All right, David Kalsgaard, everybody. Woo! Thank you, guys. I'll talk to you guys later. All right, later. Bye. Well, cut him off in the middle of goodbye. But uh, David Kalsgaard phoning it in as usual. So let's... Uh... <laughs> now, is, is that a show that says it starts at 8, starts at 8.35... Everyone does fifteen minutes. Actually, it's not. Actually, it's not. Uh, have you have you been to that? Uh, it's. I had a good time when I was there. Who have you guys oh, done yeah. that show? 
I've done it. I've done it once, and it was a really, it was a really good show. It was really well. It was well handled. I had a great set. Uh, it was weird because, like you're right, when you say intimate, it's really small, and there was like a like an entire mirror wall. Yeah, like it looks <laughs> like the like. It it should either there should either be like a weird comedy show or a seventies orgy happening in that room. Yeah, and there was like there's like fluorescent like lighting down there and yeah. stuff. But like it uh, the strangest part about it for me was uh yeah, you're you're staring at yourself in a mirror through the because it's like sort of a wide room and you're halfway in the middle of it. So the back wall is only I don't know, fifteen feet away from you or something like that, and it's a mirror. So you're looking at yourself in a mirror while doing comedy to people to the sides of you. That actually didn't stop it from being uh, a good show. It I, I, I riffed with it a little bit. I was just like, this is super weird. And it got a laugh. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's fun. Uh, it's a good show. Uh, what's next? Hey, let's, let's try our new trivia game. You guys want to try that? Okay, so this is a new uh, trivia game segment that I wanted to try out. Uh, so we're going to introduce my lovely wife, Mary Putnam. Say hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you put a little... That was the best one. <laughs> can, you Thank put... you. can you put a little more Vossler into it? Hello, everybody. <laughs> Sound <on>. drunk. <laughs> every time. So here's what I was thinking. I was thinking Mary's going to read... How many questions do you have? 15, 20. Okay, so she's just going to... We'll play to... Let's, we'll play to five. Fifteen! <laughs> have we not started yet? No. The way we're going to yeah. play is she's going to read a question and you're going to ring in with your name. So when you know the answer, just shout out your name. Oh. That'll be the buzzer. So Jimmy, James, Will, Josh are your names. Let's get Joshua, it. if you would like. Jimmy! So, uh, uh, yeah. Wait, no, shit! <laughs> I, now, I'll give you a test question so now, we can try now, it out. Okay. Here, here's the catch. If you answer and get it wrong, you can't answer the next question. You're out for one question. Does that sound good? Everybody got it? So let's do, uh, first of all, do you have a category? Fast food restaurants? Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, it's fixed. Yeah, we got a game. Now, do we have to wait till the question is being, mm -hmm. is being asked? Booty! I had to play the drop. Sorry, what? We don't have to wait till the question's being finished. If you ring in before the question is finished, she will not read the rest of the question. Nope. Okay. All right. It's good to know. Fair enough? Yep. All right. So these are fast food based trivia questions. Okay. So uh, let's just try it out and see how it works. All right. I have a section on unique items. So what fast food restaurant sells cheese curds? Jimmy. Mm. Yes. Culver's. Correct. One point for the host. <laughs> Speed is going to be my downfall, I fear. <laughs> All right. I like this. This is good. At which fast food restaurant can you acquire a Capri Sun? The Like the sack drink? Correct. Will. Subway? Incorrect. Joshua. Wendy's? Incorrect. James. <laughs> Quiznos. Nope. I am not going to answer so that I am the only one who can answer the next question. <laughs> what is the answer? KFC. Uh, you can get Capri Suns at KFC. You can get, if you're getting a kid's menu item, you can get a Capri Sun. Do I have to buy a kid's menu item? I'm not they sure. They won't just let me. I'm an I'm grown sure ass would. man. I'll just be like, hey. <laughs> Hey, KFC, give me some goddamn Capri Sun. I like my juice in a bag, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> After a few of the last answers, I think I should clarify exactly what is a fast food restaurant. It must have a drive through It must okay. have more than one location worldwide. Okay. And it must have one location in Lincoln for me to have considered it. So, so but, but, babe. Subway does fulfill all of those criteria, Correct. right? Correct, but Which I don't didn't? think Quiznos no. does. I don't. Yeah, I don't suppose Quiznos has a drive-through. No, but I do. I think Quiznos could fall under. Like I had to come up with some classification. Okay, system. fair enough. We, so that's what we're using. Rules. We we need order in society. Now I am the only one who's allowed to answer this next question. Well, what if you get it wrong? Then can we try to answer? Not it? on this one. The, then the question, Either Jimmy gets a point or a nobody watch. does. The question right. vanishes into the ethos if I don't answer. <laughs> Look how Will is indignant. I am, I am snooty right now. <laughs> Name the fast food restaurant at which you can buy baklava. What? Uh, oh, oh, King Kong. Correct. <laughs> Nailed it.
nailed it. <laughs> Two points for me. This was not... Now, even though this is my way of answering the questions, I know that it looks like I am cheating. I am not. <laughs> no. <laughs> also, for the listeners, it may sound like I married a 12-year-old. I did not. She is an adult. She just has a very small voice. Very small. <laughs> All right. Yeti, I'm, just both, aw- I'm aware of how Mary's voice you sounds. You have to get both of them on this next one. There's two restaurants where you can get tangerines. It's also known as cuties. If you buy fruit at the store, anybody, fruit. That thing that has vitamin C. No, I don't buy fruit. <laughs> if I wanted to buy fruit, I wouldn't eat fast food fast for food every meal. About fruit? Joshua Vosler. Uh, McDonald's. And? Oh, yeah, there's two, huh? <laughs> McDonald's and uh, Burger King. Close. Jimmy. Yes? McDonald's and Sonic. Nope. Ugh. Anybody else want to try their luck? Nope. Nope. Nobody what? knows where you get fruit. No, of course not. What the... McDonald's and Runza. That you a, knew where you get baklava. That was a trick question. Well, I think I should get half a point for that. All right. I'll give you half a point. I'll give you half a point. On the board. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all that means is that you need five and a half to win. The rest of us <laughs> need five. <laughs> all right. Well, next question. Here's another one. You might get half a point. Where can you buy a veggie burger? Oh, shit. Oh, wait. I'm out. James. Runza? No. Sorry. Are you sure? You at, you came up with a bunch of questions about things that none of us would ever order at these. Well, places. you can't look up prices online. Okay, right. I want to make a statement here. I assume this can't be the answer. Uh, this is a statement. This is not an answer. <laughs> I worked at Subway, and they you could get Subway sa- like they had like veggie patty sandwiches, but I assume that's not a burger because it doesn't count because it's a sandwich. A very similar, but a different qualification. You can, in fact, buy a Morning Star burger at one fast food restaurant. Joshua, Wendy's. Nope. <laughs> you were out. So wait, <laughs> well, I got half a point. Though. We're giving, yeah. we're doing right. half. Wait, we're doing half points. So does that mean that he should have another guess to get half a point? He only said one place, and then he was wrong. Seems fair. Sure. And then he only said one place, and then he was wrong. I don't care. <laughs> 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 uh, fucking, we're playing fast and uh, the rules. Look, uh, rules are important. You Jimmy. know what? We're just in, in in the interest of like not bogging down our listeners in an argument over <laughs> rules that I'm just making up right now. <laughs> everyone's back in, and we're moving on to the next question. I didn't think these questions would be so hard. They are hard. They are very <laughs> Let's hard. Let's go on to the next one. Well, I want to know the answer to that one. Oh yeah, Burger King and Sonic. My, my guess is that when you were like, "Where can you get fast?" Like we're going to get fruit and veggie burgers at fast food restaurants. 110 out of 110 listeners were like, who the fuck knows that? So we can all answer this next one? Yes. Okay. Everyone's back in. We're in the Coke or Pepsi section. Oh, God damn it. Uh, is this like a lightning round? <laughs> yes. There's like every place. Like one I, I just put Coke, down three one of them. Pepsi. Okay, so okay. Three I'm going to say okay. a fast food restaurant. You got to say if it's Coke or Pepsi. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Manny would kill this. Burger King. Jimmy. Pepsi. Wrong. James. Oh, wait, you can't do this! <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, this is right. Go ahead, He's take a guess. The rules. Take a guess. Dr. Pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua. It's Coke. Yay. I'm giving Joshua the point. <laughs> they do have Dr. Pepper. I'm just saying. I should get a half point. That wasn't the question. <laughs> Taco Bell. Will. Pepsi. Correct. All right. I I had determined that I was gonna say I was gonna yeah as soon as I heard her start talking, <laughs> and then I would just process the information after yeah. the fact. Don and Millie's. Joshua, it's Coke. Nope. Shit. <laughs> Jimmy, Pepsi. Correct. Right. I'm not above that free point. I don't know why no one else is jumping on that. Uh, all right. What do we got next? Between. Uh, just by the way, the score is Jimmy three, Joshua two, Will one. James Lindsay squadooch. Oh, sorry, Josh, one and a half. <laughs> Time for a comeback. I was trying to get that in there after that zero, but it yeah. Between Burger King and McDonald's, only including their smallest available cheeseburger, who's got more fat? Uh, Will. <laughs> McDonald's. Nope. God damn it! James! <laughs> Burger King. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. On the board. <laughs> James is literally sweating. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting intense. All right. Let's do it. All right. Who's got more fat? Arby's regular curly fries or Runza regular fries? Joshua. Uh, Arby's. Correct. 
They are the worst fries you can buy. Oh, but they're the best. Oh, I disagree. <laughs> so good. They are so good. I, this is this is. A, I've been doing this joke recently where I tell the story about going through the Arby's drive-through with Mary, and she was like, "Now don't over order." And I was like, "But I'm hungry." And she said, "No, you can get two sandwiches and fries, but that's it." Which that is a shitload of food. <laughs> that's like way more food than one person needs to eat. But I was going to get more. All right, what's next? Who can name the ingredients of a crunchy Taco Supreme at Taco Bell? The ing- Like just the stuff that's in it? What's in it? Jimmy, a crunchy Taco Supreme has a, a, a tortilla, beef, sour cream, tomatoes, cheese, lettuce. Okay, before you answer, I just want to say that can't possibly pr- be correct because like none of the things you said were soy lectin and shredded newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> so anti-dusting agent. <laughs> yeah, what made it what makes that crunchy then? The tortilla. The tortilla shell, it's a shell. Oh, it's like a taco shell? Yeah. Oh, did I get penalized for the tortilla yeah. bit? I meant taco <laughs> shell. Did I have everything else right? Yeah. Ah. Tortilla and corn shell are totally different things, because at Taco Bell you can get a flour tortilla or a corn hard shell. Two different things. I'm Sorry. Not, I will not take the point, but I am playing under protest. Okay. <laughs> What's in a Big Mac? Will. The, this Can one I, has a song. This, it does have a song. I was just deciding whether or not I was going to actually sing it and like dance monkey for you. Or uh, uh, two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Correct. Next. This is a tight game, everybody. <laughs> this is a close game. Name at least one of the three restaurants that have a crispy chicken sandwich, but do not have a grilled chicken sandwich. Joshua. Uh, Raising Cane's. Granted. What was the question again? Ooh. <laughs> that means okay, it wasn't it, on the list. But it, they don't. They don't. They don't have grilled anything. It's all you fried there. Right. It's a finger sandwich thing. It's a sandwich. Yeah. It's a chicken it's finger chicken. sandwich. Yeah. It's not one piece of chicken, so I didn't write it down. Well, but read, I remember read, seeing it on the website. Read the question again as you have it written exactly. Name one of three restaurants that have a crispy chicken sandwich, but do not have okay. a grilled chicken sandwich. You did not say the word patty, so Josh gets that point. If you had said chicken patty, he Mary, would not have Mary, it's his that. show, all right? It's his show. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were, you were giving it to him, weren't I you? I was. Okay, yeah. so yeah. Yeah, next question. No content. What, 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 were the other, what were the three? Popeye's, KFC, and Long John Silver's. KFC doesn't have a grilled chicken sandwich? Not listed on their website. Man, they have they have the whole special area dedicated to Kentucky grilled chicken. Yeah. And they don't I no, I believe you because that just uh, that's like the prepared chicken, like right. bone in chicken, but uh The fucking guy who can't eat any carbs is winning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know I would try to order you that I think they had what's called a grand slam at KFC. It's where there was no br- there was no buns, right? It was, it was too unhealthy. Okay, the double, and they okay, the double no, the yeah. double down, the double, double down. down. Yeah, now I tried to right. order that with, with with grilled chicken patties instead of uh, like uh, fried chicken patties, and they said they couldn't do that. And I think it's because they just don't even have grilled chicken patties, right? Bone, yeah, bonus. yeah, and so I could, I didn't Can order I, it because I can't eat the breading. I know, I know, it's the double down because it actually like test marketed in Lincoln yeah. first yep. before oh, wow. it went national, and the joke uh, was basically because it's called the double down, which is a gambling term. <laughs> uh, so basically, every time you order it, basically what you're saying is, "Bet I don't die." <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know, All right, questions? we got our last category is made up chicken parts. Okay, it's uh the score is nugget. Wait, <laughs> the score is shit. Three, Jimmy three, Joshua three, Will two, James one. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what non body part is available at the most Lincoln fast food restaurants? Will nugget. Incorrect. No. James, the finger. Incorrect. Ah. Uh. Did you specify which animal? Made up chicken parts. Oh, made up chicken parts is the category. What non-body part of the chicken is available at the most Lincoln fast food restaurants? I don't understand the question. I don't either. Joshua. Nuggets Beaks. was a valid guess. <laughs> I don't know. <Beaks. laughs> Fingers was a valid guess. Jimmy. 
buffalo wing. <laughs> It ha- okay, oh, everybody's man. guessed. Everybody's guessed, yeah. which Drumsticks? means which apparently means the next question doesn't exist. <laughs> what, um, what, what? It has to be strips, then, yes. right? Okay, it is strips. Oh. I can't. I I have a hard time believing it was not. It was strips over nuggets. More but... places have strips than nuggets. Five to three. Well, there are more than three places that have nuggets. So one place has McNuggets. Are you not counting that? McNuggets counted. Mi- I mean, M- McDonald's. BK Burger King has nuggets. Correct. McDonald's has nuggets. Correct. Wednesdays. Wendy's Correct. has nuggets. Try to come up with another one. I think that's it. Is that it? That's, that's it. fucking crazy. Yeah. Wow. That's bizarre. <laughs> King, King Kong doesn't have nuggets. Nope. How many fast food restaurants sell chicken bites? Jimmy, two. Nope. <laughs> Joshua, none. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Will! One? Nope. Ah. James. <laughs> Three. Correct. Oh, yeah. yeah. We have an equal number of bites as nuggets? Correct. What kind of fucking world do we live in? Uh, it's crumbling down around us. A world that contains KFC, Long John Silvers, and Kings. Oh, uh, son of a bitch. Those are not nuggets? Those are bites. Oh. <laughs> I just... <laughs> blowing my goddamn mind here. Will is Will is astonished that he has not run this game. All right. And he's really hungry. I, I got think. more more chicken parts. Oh. All right. Which fast food restaurant sells popcorn chicken? Jimmy. Oh. KFC. Nope. Incorrect. I got it. Joshua. Popeyes. Nope. James. Sonic. Correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that. Everyone has three except <laughs> Will, who has two. <laughs> I brought this category for you, Will. Oh my God! Next week we're gonna do like jazz musicians, and Will's gonna run <laughs> like he's gonna <laughs> kick our asses. Uh, all right, what, go ahead. All right, which fast food restaurant sells two different non parts of the chicken? Joshua, Burger King. Correct. Bullshit. BK discontinued chicken fingers. Strips or di- wait, they have strips again. They have strips. They had they had the no, they had chicken fries. fries. Chicken fries. God damn it, that's what I was thinking of. They discontinued the chicken fries. They have strips again. They do on the website. <laughs> Will's pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Will, the, dude, Will is gonna call the FBI and do like a full on investigation. <laughs> this is this will not stand. Uh, Josh was one point away from winning. How many questions are there? I get, I skipped a couple. Oh no! I thought those categories were done, but no, no, just trying to keep it moving. No, we keep. We got to keep going. Okay, let's go. Which fast food restaurant advertises that they cook their tortilla chips daily? Saw they, the commercial while I was writing down the questions. They cook their tortilla chips daily. Jimmy, Taco John's. Correct. That's what, damn, that's what I was gonna say. Taco John's has tortilla chips. <laughs> What? It's a Mexican like nachos. Restaurant. Yeah, like cook them really? daily. Yeah. Weird. Are they tortilla, like flour or corn? Is that what you're? Is that what you're debating? No, just like as a side, they actually have like chip nacho chips and like I like I guess I only eat potato olays at Taco John's. I didn't even <laughs> I know, know they had chips. I don't know. Well, they have nachos. Like all right. You know this. I wonder. I'm wondering if there is a discrepancy between the websites. And the actual brick and mortar places, because Mary would have never gone into any of these places. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I can't imagine that it's different. Well, it's also. I, this, I watched this... the commercials. I knew you could get Capri Sun at KFC. All right. All right. I mean, these aren't dollar menu questions. I think. Right. If this, if these would have been a series of questions about how to get the most calories for under $5, yeah. <laughs> then I would be running They definitely place. don't list the prices online. <laughs> okay, right, fair right, enough. Right. All right. Keep going. Where can you get free ice cream with dine-in orders? Joshua. McDonald's. Will. Mm. Uh, Dickie's Barbecue. Correct. <laughs> That's right. Do they have a drive-thru? Yes, yes. they do. Yes, they do. The, uh, I don't think the one downtown does. I mean, it's in the, but the one out here does. Uh, oh, I love Dickie so much. That's right, they do. Oh. They have that. The one downtown has that weird buffet that they only do on Fridays. That I down keep, in the basement. Yeah, and I want. I keep wanting to remember to actually go up there and just eat a fucking giant pile of meat what for is one the, price. What is the buffet? They it, have uh, pulled pork. 
brisket and like they're a couple of different sausages and then there's more than one of these couple restaurants. Of sides. Yeah. Dickies is a chain. Yeah. Oh, it is? I never heard of it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's pretty good. Ha- it has actually, to be franchised. There's one right out by the Lowe's trivia. off of Highway 2. Huh. And then there's one downtown. Uh, yeah. Like, and is, is the buffet just like all you can eat or? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's what buffet awesome. means to me. That's what it says. I don't know what buffet means to you, but <laughs> uh, if they were going to stop me after seven or eight plates, then it doesn't count. B- buffet to me just means the saddest room in a casino. <laughs> is really what I think of. So, uh, what uh, what else? Keep going. Uh, what are the ingredients of a sonic New York dog? Oh, oh come on. It's my favorite menu item. <laughs> sonic New York dog? Jimmy. Mm. A hot dog. A bun. So far, so good. Relish. Nah. Ah, I don't Will. A uh, hot dog, bun, chili, eh. sh- Damn it! <laughs> I don't know what a New York... If you, I if don't you, either. If you were to tell me the weird rules about how to make a Chicago hot dog, I think I might have gotten that one down. The main one was no ketchup, but... Right, right. Anyone want <laughs> Anybody to else? This? I'll, I'll try. I'm not eligible, though. I got one wrong last. I... That rule went out the window. <laughs> okay. Um, hot dog, bun... Onions. Correct. Uh, peppers. Nope. Shit. Take, might as well take a shot. All right. Hot dog, bun. I think the onions have to be sautéed for a New York dog, right? Or they're, just they're still onions. It says grilled. I was giving you onions, any kind of onions. Okay. So grilled onions and olives. Nope. <laughs> Mustard <laughs> and sauerkraut. Oh, oh, my God. All right. That's what people eat in New York? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good to me eh. but the, it, it, it needs chili let's still, be honest still got what's in a whopper uh jimmy burger patty bun cheese nope not necessarily oh I, it's nope. not a whopper with cheese fuck that's it <laughs> that's a different this thing. is bullshit james <laughs> it's the bun the patty Lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise, and pickles, and and ketchup, and fuck, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> onion. Yes, yeah, correct. Right. <laughs> oh man, score is Joshua four and a half, James four, <laughs> Jimmy four, Will three. <laughs> dun 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 dun. When it's in season. Whose filet of fish sandwich sandwich has the most fat? Uh, Me, Joshua. (laughs) (laughs) You said filet of fish? I. McDonald's. Didn't mean to lead you on. It's just the one I think of. Is that correct? No. Oh, you said filet of fish. I I did. Will? Burger King? No. James. Long John Silver. No. It can't be Long John Silver. Jimmy. They're fish all the time. Well, they can't be in season. They also have it in season. They also don't have a filet o fish. <laughs> they have a fish I sandwich. told you. I led you on. I'm sorry. Uh, Jimmy. Wendy's. Nope. Ugh. Anybody remember who had the worst fries? Arby's. Arby's, Arby's, Arby's. is a fish? Huh. During Lent, I presume. We can do some more Coke or Pepsi. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh... Boston Market. Jimmy. Coke. Correct. I win. You win. Is All that right. Boston? Okay. I will fight you. Boston Market is not fast food. It's got a drive through That is what I count as a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> you 1% motherfucker. That's A. I don't eat there. This whole I know. It's not good enough for Will, you. Will, don't worry. This whole <laughs> game was played under protest by all four of us. So. Fair enough. <laughs> then we got us lost. Congratulations, everybody. It was we're gonna call it a four way tie. Like <laughs> like most things that involve fast food, there were no winners. <laughs> <laughs> right. Everybody give Mary a hand for coming in. Hey. hey! Goodbye, everybody. Let's do some news. Joshua. Joshua. Joshua Bossler News. Hello, everybody. There's nothing like sitting next to the fireplace with a hot cup of cocoa. Cuddling up right next to my iPhone. 
I don't know what that sounded like. But... I, well, I, at first it was really creepy, and then it just got weird. Good. Okay. All right. A new study conducted by the University of Missouri explored the impact of smartphone separation. Uh, researchers claim that the effects of being separated from one's phone turns out to have a negative effect not only physio uh, psych psychologically, but physiologically, and has a negative effect on mental tasks. Uh, the author of the study claims iPhones are, com are capable of becoming an extension of ourselves such that when separated, we experience a less uh, lessening of self in a negative uh, physiological state. The researchers found that the drop in puzzle performance as well as the jump in blood pressure, heart rate, and anxiety are all significant. The solution, it was kind of weird, they said uh, the solution was to keep your phone close uh, when completing tasks that involve a lot of attention. So this, is, this is really just addiction is really all this they're describing. Those are all symptoms of withdrawal from well. anything you're addicted to, right? Uh, it, or at least that's what it sounded like to me that doesn't surprise me at all man but like for me it, it, it's not just a phone i do get nervous when i leave the house and i don't have my iphone 6 plus uh but i also am nervous when i leave the house and i don't have like my keys or my like i have a whole routine it's keys wallet phone and a roll of tums because i have really bad heartburn uh and if i'm out if I'm out anywhere without any one of those things, I, I would guess I'm preoccupied and. Right. Well, I, I mean, I assume it's kind of like, it, it's just whatever you get used to, that becomes your baseline. Yeah. And so then altering that will create a new kind of anxiety. Like, it's just like, you know, I'm, I'm just old enough that like when I was, uh, when I was growing up, like people were just starting to get cell phones yeah. and uh, and like a couple years later, people would like freak out if you would drive somewhere without your phone, like you were just gonna die right immediately. Like there was like already before smartphones, like just cell phones were new, and it was like you had to have it with you or else it was dangerous. I mean, I, I now they are different because before I had a cell phone, I had a pager for a long time. I wasn't a drug dealer. Uh, <laughs> I know that everyone looks at me and thinks drug dealer. No, I'm kidding. It, it, but like, I had a pager just because. I, I like okay. a bunch of my what? I I just you said it sarcastically as if you were a drug dealer. No, 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 no. But I, I believe just, you weren't a drug dealer. No, I was so, not. But you're not. The, you're not like an on call doctor. No, no. So why did you have a pager, Jimmy? Just my just <laughs> all of my friends in high school got pagers because they were fucking cheap. Like. Pagers were soup like it, and we would just page each other when we wanted to talk to each other. That was all it is. Wow. So you guys just bought anything. dedicated text messaging devices. Yeah, yeah. Like, we didn't use them for anything. And like, uh, this was, I mean, this was 20 years ago, you know, so I would have been 16 and I had a pager for like two years, but like, I never, like, I left it at home all the time. You know, you just never, like, couldn't go out without my pager because I wasn't like, People weren't using it all the time. I wasn't connect. It, it didn't connect me to the world the way a smartphone does. Like smartphones connect you to the world. Uh, I, I think that if you did use a pager, like if you were a doctor, you would probably have anxiety if you didn't have it. You know, but like that's the thing about a smartphone is that it's not just routine. I don't think like people are addicted to it because you know it. It, it it's not just the device itself. It's that. It's your your social networking is on it, and that's how people maintain it's, friends. It's a security <laughs> blanket, you know. Well, it's not just that. Like, well, I think it's it's just like to perform tasks, and it doesn't have anything to do with your cell phone. Performing a task, like using your mind to perform a task, you're less efficient at it without the phone in your pocket. But I I, I, don't, I don't think that's what it is, though. I what I'm saying is that okay, like I have a friend. Uh, and I don't want to name any names. I'm not going to be offensive or anything. I just don't want to. But like, it, it, but she will not talk to me on the phone. She will only text or communicate via messenger on Facebook. Because to her, that is communication. Now, whereas for me, that's like nonsense. Like, I don't consider that to be real communication. But I'm 36, you know, and she's significantly younger. And so if I try and call her, 
there's no answer. And then I'll get a text back. And I'm like, this is an important topic. We shouldn't discuss it in text. We should discuss it in person. To her, that is confusing. She's like, I don't even know. She can't even process what that means. So I think not having your cell phone to her, that's like not being able to have friends. Because that is the way she communicates with them. Well, I, I, I suspect the reason the reason that it that it like reduces your ability to like function on these like puzzles or these specific tasks that they set out before them, mm-hmm. it is because like it's an anxiety and it's not because like you feel disconnected in any conscious way. I think it's just because like you don't have it and then if you literally like any time you don't have it with your person a part of your brain is dedicated to just the task of being like, I don't know where my phone is and I have to think about that. And I just feel like that's how it works. Yeah. I'm kind of like, for me, the reason that like I get anxious when I don't have my phone though, it's not to be, it's not because I need my phone to be social. It's literally like the main thing that like I don't like when I don't have my phone is that I don't have something to look away from to avoid <laughs> eye contact. No, that's actually super important. It's specifically to I mean, avoid other people. You're joking, but that's a I'm very, not. No, I'm no. 100% telling the truth. Oh, I, but I identify with that. Like that's <laughs> a very real thing that I rely on a lot. Like I, I, the, a thing happened to me today where I, I had to get new glasses because my left eye degenerated a little bit. And so I went to pick them up today and, um, I had to take a couple eye tests or whatever. And I didn't intend to be at the optometrist's office for 45 minutes. I thought I was just going to go in and pick up my glasses, sign a piece of paper and, be, and leave. But they wanted to do a test and then they wanted me to talk to the optometrist. I'm hesitant to call her a doctor, but... <laughs> optometrist <laughs> and, and 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 uh and so i uh I, I i was sitting in i was sitting there in this waiting room and i was getting really anxious because i was i was supposed to pick mary up from work at five and i got to this place at four fifteen, and now it was four fifty five, and i'm sitting there waiting to see a, a fucking optometrist i almost said doctor again and <laughs> because she, i don't know what she was going to tell like anybody can first of all anybody can do that job anybody can go one or two two or three read the bottom line like that's anyways so uh so i was sitting there and i was getting super anxious and i kept i used my phone because i didn't want her to come out and see me angrily pacing so i was just holding my phone there staring at it so that when she finally opened the door i wouldn't just be frothing at the mouth and like glaring (laughs) (laughs) i wasn't doing anything on it i think i was just scrolling through twitter not reading anything but uh, this may be more about me now that I'm <laughs> saying it. Let's do one more story. Hey, guys, want to do some shots? <laughs> yeah? yeah? Can I get a hell yeah? Hell yeah. Hell All yeah. right, how about some Betty Crocker bombs, anybody? <laughs> hell yeah. I don't know what hell that is, but it sounds yeah. fantastic. Well, it goes with the story. <laughs> Last week, a 46-year-old woman was arrested for drunk driving after drinking over two bottles of vanilla extract and driving erratically in the Walmart parking lot in a town in New York. <laughs> That's awesome. She ended up with a BAC of .26, which Whoa. is over three times the legal limit. Uh, vanilla extract has an alcohol level of 41%. If you're really wanting to uh, drown your sorrows, try orange extract or peppermint extract, which are up to 89% alcohol. Uh, that's more than 160 proof. Holy shit. Vanilla extract Van- is like... Like the shit that you use, you, like the flavoring that you'd like put into a cake? Yes. It's just straight. Why? Because how is that alcohol? What they do is they put the vanilla in alcohol, and that alcohol is what pulls the flavor out. It's like I don't, I don't know. I guess that sounds right. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's like really like strong to in order to pull that flavor out. That's maybe what, that's why it's I, so strong. She so she was in a car, like just doing donuts in the Walmart parking lot. Drinking vanilla extract. Drinking vanilla extract. How much did she drink? Because they well, sell I think it she was super tiny forty-one percent. Forty-one percent's about vodka gin level. So I think she was already drunk, and she got some, got her hands on some vanilla. Extract. I was like, this oh, doesn't Ma- count as an open bottle. Ma- Mary just brought some vanilla extract down. Are we doing? <laughs> Technically, shots? we don't have vanilla extract. We have imitation vanilla because I'm not willing to put forth the money for the real stuff. But this has alcohol in it too. 
Oh, okay. This is, uh, I don't see where, oh, it just says, okay. <laughs> it, the ing it just says the ingredients, water, propylene, glycol, caramel color, alcohol, and artificial flavor. But it doesn't say what percentage. It doesn't have nutrition information at all. Well, orange and peppermint extract has 160 proof, which is more than anything you can get at any liquor store. That's cr that's orange extract? Oh, yeah, orange and can, peppermint. You can smell it. Oh, yeah. And this says double strength. On the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> does it really? Yeah. Oh, it totally does. Double strength. The flavor will not bake out. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like the tagline of a of a Jim Brewer movie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, all right. Well, so that let that be a lesson to you, podcast listeners. If you are, if you once the liquor stores close, oh, this, this could have been the liquor stores closed at like one or two a.m., and she went into the high V and bought vanilla extract, no. right? Yeah, yeah. I bet you, you that's what? what it was. Yeah, I bet everybody who's reading that story is like, look what this stupid idiot did is like yeah you know what are you that good at creative problem solving <laughs> <laughs> no I, if i have my cell phone on me yeah <laughs> <laughs> holy shit like that would totally work like it, 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 can you just buy can you just buy that shit off the shelves can you buy orange extract off the shelves yep guys can you mix it with like something to dilute it a little bit and will that taste terrible i don't know what that stuff is i don't know so, sounds like an experiment so here's what we need we need to, if there's anybody listening to this podcast we need one teenager to, <laughs> to shove a bottle of vanilla extract up their butthole and like just get wrecked on you wanted to butt chug vanilla extract they'd probably die yeah 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 that's what we need we need one dead teenager <laughs> oh then it'll be all over, over the, the news. news teenagers are butt chugging vanilla Vanilla extract, <laughs> then we can get vanilla extract behind the glass at the Walmart. I'd like to thank our sponsor for this week's episode, Vanilla Extract. <laughs> All we need is one teenager. <laughs> vanilla Extract. We'd also like to thank our sponsor, Applebee's. When you're here, you're family. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Applebee's. I'm loving it. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Applebee's. Some neighborhood, isn't uh, it? Your neighborhood. Feeling good. Applebee's. We're already here. Now's not the time to start complaining. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that's going to do it for our show. Who's got something coming up? Who's on some? Uh, Joshua. Check out Joshua on uh, at the pizza shop on the Missing Kitten Comedy Show. Which is tomorrow. Which is go back in time. <laughs> it, I thought it was the 13th. That's tomorrow. Well, <laughs> when this show comes out. Have already enjoyed Joshua Vossler on the Missing Kitten Comedy Show. Uh, we got that thing coming up at Dugan's. Who's on that? And when is it? The 25th? Uh, the, the, the dive, dive jokes. Yeah. At Dugan's on the 25th. I'm on that thing. Go see that. James, what do you got going on? Um, Knickerbockers, Friday the 29th. Fabulous. That's the, that's the taco about it. Yes. 35 taco cent it. tacos and James Lindsay telling jokes. Come how check can, it out. How can you go wrong? You can't. Well, you could not go. That'd be wrong. Yeah. That's how you could go wrong. So go see all of those things. Uh, that's been our show. Hope you guys had as much fun as we pretended to for <laughs> Joshua Vosler, mm. William Doherty. Boston Market is not fast food. <laughs> our special guest, James Lindsay. Bye, everybody. My lovely, <laughs> talented, beautiful friend, James Lindsay. Bye, everybody. So you thought I was going to go to Mary there. My <laughs> wife, Mary. Bye. <laughs> I have been your host, Jimmy Putnam. This is another song from a ferocious jungle cat. Find them near you and enjoy them. Thank you and good night. you I can't understand what it is you're